So in this uh, video, we'll be going over the basics on how to get started with Fusion 360 for FTC. So the first step you guys want to do is go to the link in the description and copy and paste the link that we have there. It should be the first link. And what we want to do is create an Autodesk account. So um, the Autodesk account is slightly complicated to create. So the best way to actually know how to create an account is go to the website and there should be a video showing how to actually create an account. So watch this video and it'll actually teach you how to create an account. So after you watch this video, um, you guys want to create your account and then you want to sign in to your Autodesk account. Um, you'll need to make sure it's an educational account. So you have to show your transcript or show your student ID or something in order to verify that you're a student since Fusion is a paid uh, software. Unless you're a student, then it is free. So once you sign in to Fusion, we can start the process of downloading the software. After you sign in to uh, Autodesk, you'll want to download Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is one of the many CAD softwares that um, Autodesk offers. But in this video, we'll be going over how to use Fusion 360. So get the product, click Access. And afterwards, you have to down um, download it. Sometimes it might not work, so you can click Please Try Again, and then you can download it. And then open up the software, and now we'll be going over how to actually use Fusion 360 for FTC specifically. So the first thing that uh, everyone should do is create a new folder. These folders will contain all of your documents and you can name this folder something like demo or test or whatever you want to name it. So what we want to do is create a new document. So there's already one document already here. And the way you save this document in your folder is by clicking control S and then you'll have to give it a name. So you can name it test one and then it'll be saved right over here. So. Um, one thing you should probably do when you're creating documents or catting is try to give them accurate names. This will help you keep track of documents whenever you make larger CAD files that are used in multiple different components. So what you want to do is create your first document right over right here. And if you want to create any additional documents, you can click the plus button, save it, and then name it test two or whatever. Additionally, you can create more folders inside this initial folder and separate them out like this. So now we'll be going over the basics on how to actually CAD a simple design. So to go over the, the basics of how to actually CAD, we're gonna create this simple uh, component. So first step is you wanna create a sketch. So you can create a sketch on any of these three planes. These are the origin, so you can create on the X, the Y, or the Z. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to go with this one right over here. And then after you create the sketch, what we want to do is create a rectangle. So this rectangle uh, can be any dimension. So for example, we'll just go with 50 millimeters for this side and 100 millimeters for this side. So this allows it to have set dimensions right here. Um, another way to create the dimensions is, for example, if there were no dimensions and you just had a rectangle right over here and you can adjust this. You click the sketch dimension or click D on your keyboard. And then from here to here, you get the height. And let's just say this is 100. And then we get the width. And we want the width to be 50. So now we get the rectangle shape that this is based off of. And next, what we want to do is create a smaller square to create this portion right over here. So we'll go here and go here. And now we want to make this distance, let's just say we want to make it 10 and make this distance 10 to, to make it symmetrical. And then we wanna also adjust the height, so the height will be 30. So we can't actually define this area from here to here since it's already defined, since this is 10, this is 10, this will be 30. And if you try to define it, it'll give you an error saying it's over constrained because of course you can't have this be a different dimension other than 30. So next we wanna do is create a circle right over here in the center. So um, we can set the dimension, and now we can set the size, that the diameter of the circle. So again, we'll just say 30. And then we can set the position. So what we want to do is create it in the center right over here. So 25 millimeters, which is the center of 50. And then if you want to make it symmetrical, we can make this 25. And now, for example, if you want to change any of the values, like, okay, this was 25 centimeters, and we wanted to make it the 
exact same. So we can go here and make it 25. Right. Now to make this from a two-dimensional object into a three-dimensional object, what we want to do is extrude it out. So right now we have it here and we can now extrude this out and make it from a uh, a two-dimensional sketch into a three-dimensional object like this. So let's just say we want to extrude out 25 millimeters. And now we have our first uh, component. Now, once you have your initial component, there are many other features that you can do. Like, for example, we can use a fillet in order to make the corners rounded. We can also use a chamfer, which allows this to become a flat edge right here at 45 degrees. These are modifications that you can do to change up the 3D model. So now that we built a simple component, we're now going to be going over how to uh, import existing components from certain vendors into Fusion 360. So we have a separate video explaining what the certain vendors are, such as GoBuilder and Rev Robotics and Andy Mark. And in this video, we explain why certain vendors are better and certain vendors are worse. In this uh, Fusion 360 tutorial video, we're gonna just specifically use GoBuilder. Um, so what you wanna do is go down in the description. It should be the second link in the description. It should be this. Um, it should be a link to a file. You wanna download that file, right? And this is a list of all of the FTC parts um, that are in the GoBuilda website. So if you go to GoBuilda, they have all sorts of parts. They have U-channels, quad plates, screws, wheels, and a bunch of other parts. And this file basically contains all the parts in a STL file. Or not STL file, my bad, a uh, step file. So I'm gonna go to is downloads right over here. When, um, seven and then extract files over here it might take a bit of time since there are a lot of parts What we want to do is upload the files that we downloaded onto Fusion 360. So we click the upload button, then we click select files. So one thing we want to do before we actually download all of them is some of the files names are too long so, and you'll get an error message if you download them directly. So what we want to do is change the name of the 5203 motors, right over here 5203, all of them to just 5203 motors. So you click this rename and name them 5203 motors and then for the 5204 same thing click rename 204 motors no. and now what we want to do is go to the top right here and select all of these and open them then there'll be a long list of parts and what you want to make sure is that the location is in parts right over here. You want to make sure it's not in the same folder as the rest of your stuff because it'll clutter up all of your things and then there'll be almost a thousand parts in the same thing as your other things and it'll be impossible to find anything as well as make your whole stuff lag. So you want to make sure to make it in a separate folder called parts. So you select this and make sure it's uh, demo, parts, and then whatever you want to name it there. Uh, I'm not going to click the upload button since I already uploaded it, but you guys should click the upload button. Then afterwards what happened is you click part over here and then all of it should show up here. So now what we want to do is build a basic uh, drivetrain using CAD. So the basic drivetrain will be built of the go build the parts that we uploaded previously. So the way you can upload them onto your current document that you're using is by going into your parts section and looking for the correct file that you want to upload in. So you, when you right click on it right here, you can insert into current design, whichever specific part you want to do. There is one method of doing it. The other method is going right over here and clicking the search button and searching for the part. 
Um, this one method is easier, but it does require some prior knowledge of knowing all of the names of the Go Builder parts. So if you go to Go Builder right over here, their website, they have specific names for all their parts. These are called the 1120 series U channels. And similarly, their motors are the 5202 motors or the 5203 motors. And all their um, parts have a specific number and name to it. So what you want to do is search the name and then there'll be specific names and specific parts that you can insert in. So what we're going to start off with is using um, these 18 hole U channels, right? Because the size limit is 18 inches and we want an 18 by 18 robot. So we're going to insert two of them into our current design right over here and then rotate this 180 degrees. So now we have two U channels, and then we're going to insert some motors into the drivetrain. 5202. Two. So you can use either 5202 or 5203 motors. Those are the standard motors. The 5204 motors are slightly different than them, but um, those motors do work. So we'll insert four of these in. For now, it doesn't really matter uh, the difference between all of these. These are different gear ratios. Um, there's a slight size difference, but it doesn't matter too much for what we're doing right now. So we'll insert all of them into the design. And then the way to connect all of these parts together, because you can see they're all moving around, is by using joints. So the J button on your keyboard right over here, you click joints. It'll allow this part right over here to be connected to any part on your robot. Uh, not on your robot, on the U channel right over here. So click this and click this, and then they join. You have to make sure you join at specific spots. So if you click the joint button right over here, you wanna make sure you click the outer circle right over here or this circle right over here. So then it gets the right area. Cause if you click right over here, it'll center the area of the joint around this. So for example, if I click the joint right here and then click right over here, what happens is it's not centered, right? So what you want to do is click the joint directly in the center like this, right over here, and then click the joint directly over here. Now, one thing you do notice is that this is backwards right over here. So you can click the flip button in order to change the orientation. So this is actually the wrong hole. So what you want to do is go here and join in the correct hole. Right over here. This. So now we have two U channels on this side. And now we want to do the similarly for the other side. So you click join. Click this. Make sure it's centered. Then you join this together. And do that for all four sides. Next, what we're going to do is connect these two together. So what we're going to do is use quad plate in order to, um, so I'll get a quad plate from this. So you have to go and go build a search up the exact name for the quad plate. Uh, we don't want this one right here. We want this one. And then this is the 1201 series, right? So search this up. Right, and then this one right over here, this one we want. I'm going to insert this into current design. And then we're going to click this, click the join button, and we want to join this somewhere in the center. So I'm just going to make a guess right over here. So uh, it looks like I think I might have messed up when I clicked the joint. And you can see it's not aligned properly. So I click cancel and then I can redo the joint. So I click joint. And then you find the exact hole over here. Try to line it up. So a few things about the joints. There are multiple different types of joints. You have the rigid joint, you have the revolution joint, you have slider joints. There are many different reasons why you want different joints for animations and moving things on. Right now, a bit complicated. For now, we're just gonna go with the basic rigid joint. And you want to make sure you align it up like this right over here. The rigid joint allows it for something to not move at all. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention is what you want to do is make sure you ground one specific part right over here. Um, so you can just capture position, but you want to make sure you ground it. Um, if it is not ground, you can see how this can move around everywhere. This thing cannot move. So everything is set in a specific area. This is really important. So then you can view the 
document properly and it's uh, easier to manage. So what I'm gonna do is insert the same thing on the other side, right over here. And then now we can use those two quad plates to join these sides together. So we can get a beam. So we want a 1120 view channel. We need to find maybe eight holes should be good enough, right? And then same thing, we'll need two more quad plates and we'll use it to join them together. So the quad plate was 1201. And then we can join it like this. So right now I'm not cutting directly with screws and having all the components right now. But um, one thing you should probably do is afterwards when you see this right here, you should probably say there's going to be a screw in this hole right here, a screw in this hole and this hole. So you take the M4 screws, see if it shows up. Now I'll probably have to go to go with the, yeah, so these ones right here. And then make sure you insert them in and then the specific part right here like this and then you also have a nut on the other side so for this there would be a nut on the other side right here I'm not going to insert it right now but that's basically how you'd build it so same thing for the other side we need another quad plate uh, I forgot what it was 1201 join and then join this together too, like this. And now we have a drivetrain. So I won't attach the wheels since uh, you probably already get the idea of how to build the drivetrain. So now I'll be showing off some cool features about uh, Fusion 360. So first, we gonna make sure we save this, right? We're gonna make sure we save our designs, right? So one thing we can do is if we save this, right, and say, for example, this is our full robot, right? What you can do is, hypothetically, we rename this. This is our drivetrain. You can insert this into your full robot design, as well as inserting other parts. And what this allows you to do is, for example, if you edit anything in this, like, let's say we want to change this mid-beam, so let me just remove it for now, and then save this right over here. So when we go to our full robot design, what will happen is this will update. So that's one thing that's very cool about Fusion 360. Another thing that's really cool about Fusion 360, it has the version history. So right over here, if you click version history, you can actually see the different versions of the drivetrain that we created. So uh, if you guys make a mistake or made an error or something like that, you can go back in the version history and go back and edit and go back to a previous version. Uh, another really cool thing about uh, Fusion 360 is the ability to share. So right over here, um, this is just a um, separate thing that is not shared with anyone else. But if I wanted to, for example, share it with someone else, I can go right over here and say, for example, I want to share with Akash. I can go over here, Akash Mundial, and whatever, at email.com, right? And then invite him and then share it. And then we can both collaborate together on the project. Finally, the last thing that I'll be showing off is the timeline feature. So timeline is something that's really cool about Fusion 360. So for example, if you wanted to go back in time for a previous edit or previous thing, you can go right over here and go back to previously when certain things were missing. So I'll show you this specifically in the first test that we did right over here when we made this. So if you wanted to remove the chamfer or fillet, we can just go here and then they will be gone like this. And one thing that's really cool about the timeline features if we wanted to for example edit this right over here we wanted to make this 30 millimeters now right distance and make this 30 millimeters it'll edit it into the actual thing right over here and if we save it right over here it will show up in this sometimes it takes a um, few tries to load in but this you see how this is edited and it's the exact same as this right over here so if you wanted to make any changes to this uh, model right over here, you would want to 
edit this original sketch. If you wanted to add more things onto the side or something like this, you can create a new sketch. And remember how originally you could only do the three dimensions right over here. But now what you can do is anything on this body. So we can create a new sketch onto this body, make a new rectangle, and then add some dimensions onto it like this. So eight millimeters here, eight millimeters here. And then make this whole thing like eight by eight. So just some random numbers just made up. And then what you can do is extrude this through. Right. So there's many cool features that you can do. And if you wanted to, for example, uh, just do this, you, you can go back and then remove one specific part of this or go back and uh, edit specific things like this. So that's what's really cool about the timeline. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial on how to get started with Fusion 360 for FTC. If you guys did enjoy this video, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, uh, leave it down in the comment section and we'll try to respond. Um, thank you for watching.